In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our sermon this morning is St. Matthew's account of the temptation of Jesus. Dearly loved by God in Christ. Headlines are meant to grab our attention, whether they're on a printed page that we can hold in our hands or online. They apparently teach them in journalism school that you have to have a sharp attention getter. Dog bites man, doesn't do that. But man bites dog is a good headline. How about this for an attention getter? Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The God-man Jesus Christ would go one-on-one with that very fallen angel he had cast from heaven. And the stakes were high. The forgiveness of our sin and our eternal salvation in heaven were at stake and on the line. Jesus had traveled from the area in Judea along the Jordan River where John the Baptist had baptized him. And now he traveled south into the wilderness of Zin, or the desert. But this was more than just a journey of miles that Jesus covered with his feet. This was really a journey from equality with God to taking on the very nature of a servant. Jesus traveled these miles to accomplish what the Apostle John had written about him in his first epistle. John wrote, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's power, the devil's work. That destroying Jesus' power, destroying Jesus' work, was a battle that our Lord willingly waged. So this morning we give our attention as Jesus took the battlefield against Satan on our behalf. First of all, we soberly recognize our weaknesses and helplessness. Is our victory through faith. Our weaknesses and our helplessness against Satan's temptations to sin are not without precedent. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, Satan tempted them to to doubt and to disobey. And they followed. They listened to Satan instead of to God. King David, Satan tempted him to pride. And that led our Lord's ancestor into sins of murder and adultery as David followed and gave in to Satan's temptations. Satan tempted Jesus' disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane to run away from him in fear of being arrested, maybe even suffering death themselves. And they followed and gave in to Satan's temptations and listened to him. Isn't it true that each and every day of our lives, we have to soberly confess our weaknesses and our helplessness against Satan's temptations to sin according to our human nature. It is just impossible for us, by our own strength, own wills, not to follow Satan when he tempts us to sin. 
You and I do not have the power not to put our stomachs over God. You and I do not have the desire to trust in the Lord completely and not ever put him to the test to have him show that he loves us. You and I don't have the power or the desire to be satisfied with what we have, but rather we want to seek the riches of this world, even if it means forsaking our Father's word and bowing down and worshiping evil. But our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, knows exactly what we go through every day. He understands because of our weaknesses and our helplessness that we must soberly admit, according to our nature, that we are not able to resist Satan's temptations to sin. And that's because he himself faced those very temptations as our substitute. Our Lord Jesus, true God and true man, the Bible says, was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. And right before that we read, for we do not have a high priest, the writer to the Hebrews says, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses because of those things. As you and I recognize and confess our sins of covetousness, pride, greed, lust, false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins, and our helplessness to overcome them, we see Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Now we know why he permitted that. Now we know why there is that headline that is so unusual that Jesus would do those things for us. There, Jesus took the battlefield on our behalf and waged war against Satan. There, our substitute, our high priest, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tempter and overcame him. He was tempted in every way just as we are, but was without sin. He did not even consider going against his father's will or disobeying his father's word or thinking of himself more than others. He only thought of his Father and of us. Our Lord Jesus Christ experienced in the flesh the same twisted truths, the same appealing misrepresentations that Satan puts into our lives every day and often give in to them. But because he overcame them, we are forgiven. Because he overcame them, we have the power, according to our new will, to say no to them in our lives. Because Jesus' victory over these temptations is our victory through faith. As Jesus took the battlefield against Satan on our behalf. Jesus' temptation in the wilderness by Satan was part of his active obedience under the law. It was part of his obedience so that he would have perfect righteousness that God would offer to the world in the gospel. And that the Holy Spirit would work in the hearts of men through that same gospel. Here, Jesus crushed the serpent's head, as God had promised he would do in the Garden of Eden. 
The Holy Spirit offers, reveals, and brings faith in Jesus' righteousness through the gospel and imputes to us that righteousness and its power. I've heard sermons, and I'm sure you've probably heard sermons too, that the main point of the temptation of Jesus is that he used God's word to overcome temptation, and that's what we should use to overcome temptation. And that's true, but that's not the main point. The main point is that Jesus, in my place, overcame temptation, and as a result, I'm forgiven when I don't. And that I now have the power to overcome that temptation often in my life as a child of God. There in the wilderness, the devil, like a roaring lion, was seeking to devour Jesus Christ. We can almost see Jesus hungry, tired, resting there all by himself and Satan circling around him, maybe closing in on Jesus. Remember that these three temptations that are recorded are only the final ones. They're typical of all the temptations that Jesus had been suffering for a month and 10 days. Here, Satan is zeroing in for the kill for his final opportunity to get Jesus to give in to the sins of self-doubt, self-pity, and to be self-serving. After all, look what your father has asked you to suffer already, just becoming a human being. And here you are now, hungry, starving, after a month? Put your stomach first. How unfair that is that your father would ask you to go without food that long. And then he told Jesus, throw yourself down from the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, God will protect you. Your father will keep you safe from all harm. And then he took Jesus and made an offer he had no right to make. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the riches of this world. Self-doubt, if you are the Son of God. Self-pity, why should you have to go without your daily bread? And be self-serving. I'm going to give you all these riches if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus resisted all of Satan's lies and all of Satan's temptations. And he quoted the word of God. He wielded that sword of the spirit, the word of God, to cut down those lies of the devil. He used the shield of his faith in his father to turn back the fiery darts of temptation. Jesus does teach us to use the truth and the power of God's word to overcome Satan's urgings to do what God commands us not to do and to urge us not to do what God commands us to do. You know, very often as we look at these temptations, we see very clearly Jesus did not do what God commanded him not to do. But Jesus always also did always what God commanded him to do. He loved the Lord his God with all of his heart, with all of his soul, and with all of his mind. Jesus never doubted the love of his Father. Jesus' victory over Satan is our victory through faith. He uses the weapons in the fight of faith and the word that he gives to you and me. 
And even though Satan has no power over us as Christians, we don't ever want to take lightly his deceit and his trickery because he still, as a roaring lion, is walking about circling us and wanting to devour us and destroy our faith. And so when I foolishly begin to listen to Satan and begin to have self-doubt relationship with God, when I begin to li listen to Satan's lies and uh, begin to have self-pity because God doesn't seem to be giving me my daily bread, like he said, when I begin to listen to Satan's temptations to be self-serving and think that I can have riches that he offers me but has no right to offer me because they all belong to God. But when I become self-serving and think of all the things I can have if I'll just follow the devil for a, a little while, resist the devil and he will flee from you just as he fled from Jesus. When Jesus had had enough and fulfilled the scripture and had overcome temptation, he said, away from me, Satan. And Satan had to obey him. Jesus willingly took the battlefield against Satan on our behalf and there conquered him. There destroyed his power over us and the results of our sin. There is a startling headline. The Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But Jesus allowed that so that his victory over Satan is ours. Amen.